previous best was a 56.271 for today. Mm -hmm. And we improved to 55.874. And as I was saying, <clears throat> well, first off, going into it, you see, you got a higher, you got a higher exit speed out of the final, out of the final turn because your previous lap was a 56.9. Mm -hmm. And if we, if I scroll this back, and you check the, the exit speed at three, it compounded all the way down there. You see it? Yeah. There it is, right there. So you had, I mean, you know, the, the, the good laps build on each other. So 55.9 gave you stronger exit speed, all right? And then like we talked about here, going through turn, you're lining into turn one, being able to get full throttle on the throttle, you know, full throttle in the chicane, judging your braking point. And yeah, you, you actually rotate the car here mm -hmm. under braking. You get some rotation out of it and you're able to get on the throttle so that you know, you get you have a net gain going through the one two chicane there. Yeah. yeah. That, that was outstanding. You Thank see you. here the way you're judging your braking point. I mean that's just that's good. Another thing to look at, look at your steering inputs. Mm-hmm. Smoother. Yeah, absolutely. Smoother. So and full throttle and holding full throttle on exit. Mm hmm Now, coming here to turn three. <laughs> Where the party's at. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, it's not an easy thing to do, mm -hmm. but in general, you're carrying a bit more speed on entry, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and your and you're, you're steering input, you, you're dealing it, you're dialing in a bit of a counter steer because you're rotating the car. Mm -hmm. And here at this counter steer, you're resting, you arrest the rotation with... So can I kind of play it with the, so say we're about here, I mean, I know it doesn't say like what angle the wheel is at or anything, does it? I'm just trying to better visualize. So say the wheel is we're about here, and you're saying that it, it it's a counter steer back to center, or is it a? Does it say that? This reference line here is is centered. The steering steering angle is is zero degrees. Okay. So you come back from a bit of a right turn to center. To center. Yeah. Okay. Basically center. A slight dip. A slight dip in counter steer. Okay. But don't let don't let the graph drive how much you need to steer. Okay. Your okay. steering is. It's more about feeling what the car is doing mm -hmm. and trying. What I'm saying is, don't look at this and say this says three degrees of counter steer. Mm -hmm. So each time you go in, you're going to do three degrees of counter steer. No, that doesn't work because you're not going to have the exact same conditions every time. Right. You're doing a good job of feeling the car. Okay. But my point here is, you get the car rotated in, you arrest the rotation with more throttle than counter steer, more throttle than steering. Yeah, and it, I would have, Kelly, I would have never thought to have been able to have caught that slide, that, to rebalance the car by just applying the gas, the throttle. I mean, that, that thought never crossed, you know, I was like, okay, shit, I'm here, you know, then I'm going to do some funky stuff over here, but just, like you said, just leave it, relax, let something happen for a moment, because I'm pre-doing everything. Like, I'm trying to beat the race, and the race didn't even start yet. So, you know, I really appreciate you, you know, shedding light on that. And I was just able, like you said, to, to bring it back into its proper form, just with, with some throttle application. And when you think about it, you want the nose to go, in turn three, you want the nose to go this way. Mm -hmm. So, turning the wheels that way is counterproductive. So... You want to you want to counter steer. You want to reduce the amount of counter steer. As soon as you do this, you, then you can't. You're, you're giving up all that nose authority to come back in and keep the nose tracking right. So let the nose track right. Keep the front wheels pointed in that direction as well. Arrest the slide. Arrest the arrest the oversteer. Stabilize the car more with throttle. And that keeps the nose pointed where you want it to go. Yeah. And then essentially, you if and correct me if I'm wrong. If we go to um, to oversteer compensation. We essentially have to start the whole process over again. Yeah, because now that you counter steered, yeah, exactly. The weight is transferred the other direction, the other side of the car, and then you got to bring it back in all over. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah, you did you did an excellent job as far as the counter steer, counter steer, slight, not even, almost coming back to neutral. All right, using the throttle to arrest the arrest the rotation, and then boom, um, getting on the throttle, getting on the throttle there, get, you know, getting on the throttle, a bit of a lift off. You know, but, but that's fine. I mean, overall, the net effect was, you see how we got we got out yeah. of the turn there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely see that. 
so this this lap here, I say it was a fluke simply because you just can't right here, you know. Would have been the picturesque way to go to come on here. That's a one in a once in a lifetime event, basically, as far as being able to get that perfect amount of slide, and, and it, it wasn't even done intentionally. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it just happened. So, you know, you, you were doing, look at this, 55, 9, 55, 9, 55, 8, 56 flat, 55, 9, 56 flat, 55, 9. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this tells me that, hey, now you've got the hang of turn three, and we're going to talk about not working so hard for turn one, two, because we know we've got that lift. Let's focus on three to get three down, and then we'll come back and put it all together. Questions on that? Um, I don't. I don't believe so. No. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, so we're in between one and two. Um, so we get that full throttle. We get to kind of go up over the hump, and I'm I'm initiating the brake pressure right as I crest it, and then applying a little more as we go down. And then to wait, I'm kind of waiting to see if I can get that front right tire to kind of just tick a little bit. Then that's that's what I've been using as my reference. That, okay, that was a significant enough pressure, or that was kind of more or less like optimal, or um, it might not be optimal, but that was where I was at my optimal. And um, what else? and then just getting it, getting it around. And I was, it still surprises me that, like you said, to get a little bit of wheel spin. trying to improve upon then coming into three, just bringing it the same concept, but bringing the car in um, that much closer. Yeah, just maybe, you know, not even, not even, maybe two tire widths closer. Okay. That's about it. You know, um, there's not much really to critique on this. You see, you turn in, car stabilizes there, and you added a bit, here, here, here's what it was. Mm -hmm. Right here, when you go to arrest the rotation, you added a bit too much throttle, just like you saw. And it started going straight again. Yeah, so that was just a little bit too much throttle. Mm -hmm. And you, then you had to, oh no, that's a bit too much. You lifted, brought it back in. So if you just added just a touch less throttle there, um, then the car probably would have stabilized another two, two, two tire widths to the right, mm -hmm. closer to the apex, and, and would have would optimized it even more as far as for your exit. Trying to just like catch it over here, mm -hmm. 
but I love maybe you know some direction. Okay, that's very really what you're aiming for. Not necessarily aiming for, um, but that's what we're referencing. Well, a couple of things. You know, turn three is wide. You don't have very many distinct reference points. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> look through the turn and. Here, here's what, uh, here's how racers typically build their sight picture, put together a lap. They okay. pick distinct reference points, mm -hmm. and they build their library of reference points. They keep adding more and more and more because the more reference points you have, the better, the more you know, the more information you have to, to better position your car. Right. All right. Then from that they connect the dots. They they go from okay, here are my reference points for braking, reference point for transition for turn in, reference point for apex, reference reference point for acceleration, reference point for track out. Mm -hmm. They connect those dots, bam, 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 bam. Then they color it in, fill it in with, with you know, they color it in and add shading as far as for building blooming the whole the whole picture. Right. So that so you got your reference point here on the left hand side for where you want to break and where right. you want to turn in. But here, this is sort of a no man's land as far as for where, where to go. But some things you can look at, you got the pine tree there, you got the cannon sign there. But this is happening so quickly, your primary reference more should be the edge of the track. Okay. Okay? And where you want the car to be at the edge of the track. You're more, this, this turn is so wide, it's such a broad sweeper that it's not so critical. The critical point is where you, where you are as far as turning room and getting down to the apex. Because mm -hmm. I've been trying, like, and the few times, excuse me, I tried to note it. I don't know if you like um, us or a driver to talk, but I, you know, when you'd see me overshoot one or whatever I wanted, you'd know that's kind of what I, I just blanked. And, I mean, it's a horrible excuse, but I, I saw you know my apex and then I just left it. And for some reason, I would just not continue looking at it. Yeah. Save that for the debrief. Okay. Okay, because. What's happening is when you're trying to verbalize to me what your thought process was and why I did this and why I did that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that's energy not devoted towards improving on the lap. Yeah, I'm and, trying, yeah, and I'm also trying to get better at story. Okay. You know, and it's like maybe, and so I'll, I'll definitely work on it, but if I can, I try and say it to myself, and it's like, so I can get better at, you know, like you were saying, every time we show up you know, to each corner, we have a little log book for this little portion, that little portion. But it's happened in, in seconds. Yeah, and what I would say to that is verbalizing it takes quite a bit longer than just thinking it. So, you know, it, it, if you're going to, if you're verbalizing it as take as a step towards thinking it, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. But realize that you don't need to verbalize it to me. You can tell me in the debrief. You don't have to make excuses. What? Well, oh, I screwed it. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm not saying don't think about it or don't verbalize it. What I'm saying, you know, yeah, log it. But if you just think it, think it to yourself versus trying to, you know, form the words and speak it. Forming the words and speaking it takes longer than just thinking it to yourself. Mm -hmm. So just think it to yourself. Okay. And if you got time on the next trade away, you know, then you can, you know, if you want to say something to me, that's fine. But you know, but during the training, during instruction, I don't expect you to have to. You don't have to tell me what you were thinking, what you were doing. You know, if I want to know, I'll, I'll pause it and ask you. Okay. So, yeah, so let's look at the, you know, the picture for exit out of three. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some reference points to look at, mm -hmm. some, some things to, to think about, you know, like maybe where the, where the billboards are aligned. Okay. But, but the main thing, I, I think, is this is one of those things, this is one of those situations where you don't have very distinct reference points to choose from. So I look at the big picture, mm -hmm. particularly looking at looking down around the turn and where is it starting to open up, you know? Yeah. And your throttle, adding throttle out of turn three is, is such a gradual process because it's a sweeper that you, you can, uh, as you've seen already, you can start to add throttle and then you can say, how am I doing, how am I doing? You can actually update the rate at which you're adding throttle given how the car is progressing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I always say, Kelly, extremely annoying me. Cool. And I've been working, I tried to remember what you said, it was that nose, that bubble there, mm -hmm. which is the edge. OK. 
Okay, there it goes. I kept reminding myself of that. I was like, Kelly said, Be impatient with the downshifts. I could have been a little signal. That was nice. Yeah, I, that was my best track. Well, say the whole, that's what I was trying to achieve each time. Because I missed, I, I'm pretty sure, I don't even know if there's a throttle adjustment there. There's a slight, just a slight bobble. It's like more of a calming feeling when you're going through the steps progressively and not over rushing the What do you mean? Just like it was, it was so much easier, enjoyable, you know, to not just be, I mean, to act like I'm driving 200 when I'm really only doing, you know, 110. And it's like, just chill out. Oh, you talking about turn two in particular? Just, just the whole thing, just driving itself. I mean, that's I'm learning a, a tremendous deal just on my own character and how I try and tackle driving. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of what I'm expressing right now. Is uh, you know my legs are were all super tense. I started to just loosen up, loosen up and relax. And,